Shalom family and happy Sabbath. We are heading into another beautiful Sabbath and what makes this even more precious um, I'm heading into my very first Passover festival celebration and um, so I'm, ex I'm excited to, to be part of this understanding the times that we are in right now right so we are in the midst of a storm folks are quarantined they cannot move left or right and yet um, I'm out of work I have my essential worker ID I have my mask <laughs> I have my gloves in my purse this is the way I travel now right when I'm going out if I have to get air or Anywhere before I head into work, I have these um, with me at all times. I have my gallon of water because you need to stay hydrated and you just start eating healthier. So I have my walnuts. Okay, it's a change in lifestyle if you're not there yet. I strongly encourage it. And then I also have my bag of goodies. I mean, between lunch and water, and I have also, I spoke about lozenges. My lozenges, if you can see through the close, this is a really good one. It's like your throat on fire. Um, that should be the COVID. <laughs> so I'm prepared, I'm heading in. Um, I just wanted to send a, a quick word to everyone. My Instagram family, hope all is well, praying for you as always. We've witnessed a few miracles this week alone from last week. Time is going by so quickly. I have two individuals that were contracted with COVID-19, two senior individuals, and um, they were sent home and they're resting comfortably. And of course, the church family and everyone is praying for full recovery. Recovery. So um, God is great. And, and understand, sometimes God, in the midst of the storm, God calls his servants away. If A, they have finished their assignment, um, or B, he does not want the servant to be tainted in any way. And many a times, the young individuals who pass and they've just been good throughout their life, doing good, consuming the word of God, and really, it's God's child, you can tell, like walking in the spirit and living in the spirit. You know, boom, 2021, 20, they walked away. I received this message on WhatsApp about this, 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 this man servant of God died, I think, 2021. I think it was a car accident. I'm not sure if it was last year or this year. But um, in the dream, the pastor asked, was asking God, like, why? You know, this was such a good kid. And he said, yeah, exactly right. I'm taking my good ones. So um, suffice it to say, if we're here, we still have work to do. And we need to all work out our salvation through fear and trembling. So make sure you consume the word. And um, if you're still worshiping, like a Sunday worship, and partaking in other activities that you shouldn't be, um, unfortunately, um, some folks at home, I'm hearing statistics about suicide rates are up, or at least suicide ideation. Um, I'm hearing... Um, guns at home, you know, abuse, child abuse, some daycares have to reopen because of fear of child abuse at home because the parents are not used to dealing with their own children. They would send them off to school to misbehave and now they are quarantined with them. They're unable, they're out of control. So what? So I would say exhale like I did. Um, you have to go into the word. He will direct you in kind. He will give you that shalom that's needed. Um, in the midst of everything, I myself, I'm not sh yeah, I was about to say I'm not sure, but at this point in time, I do have, and I, there's a feeling of peace that totally consumes me. Um, I also have a conflict at work next week where, you know, we have Passover on Tuesday and um, the feast of the week, the feast of the week starts the Wednesday into seven days, a feast of unleavened bread. And um, I have to work because we're considered essential employees. So I'm thinking about it. I'm not going to allow it to consume me because some something is going to work out. Um, I was going to take, and I've always taken time off when I thought I was doing the right thing when for Easter and Good Friday. Now knowing that that's not the right holiday that we should be celebrating. Um, 
you know, the goal was to have this time off, take a whole week or even two weeks for this time and really have a really prayer worship um, week. But we'll see. I know God is great and he'll work something out. I don't quite see it yet. And maybe my supervisor might just say, you've been a constant during this time and go right ahead. So I'm hoping, you know, um, and God can change stones of um, hearts of stone into into can melt it. Let's just say can melt it. So I'm giving it up to him, and I will be home for Passover at least those two days, the beginning of the Feast of Unleavened Bread and Passover. That's Tuesday and Wednesday. So, but I'm heading into work, and the roads are clear. I will ask that I was speaking to my nephew yesterday as well and I was telling him so what is he doing during his time aside from school you know the kids are a little bit down they can't be with their friends etc and all of this stuff is going through their minds and here their aunts and other people are telling them about this faith and change etc so you know I'm encouraging them to to put their passion into words, into music, into an art form that would help them. Studies have shown that um, artistic expression as a form of personal expression is a great way, it's therapeutic, and it's a great way to alleviate anxiety and pain and anything else that they may or may not realize that they're going through. Um, so I was in, in the process of writing a poem in my head last weekend and I'm hoping this weekend it emerges and if it does I'll share it with my Instagram family and I will challenge you to submit your own poem during this time in terms of well, what are you doing um, or write music or paint a picture anything artistic really 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 helps it's a great meditative reflective practice and again during this time regardless whether you feel you need it or not it really helps so every time I walk down and I take this trip down it's like okay I'm going in you know but I'm covered in the blood of Christ so that's the important thing to know so that's how you gotta weigh your fate um, strongly boldly confess and um, another good thing that has happened to me actually at June as a result of this at work I'm spending more and more time with the frontline staff um, first-line responders um, whether they're clerks or doctors or nurses etc what I'm doing is that we have like emotional wellness sessions with them we have peer-to-peer one-on-one sessions with them just pretty much saying how are you doing something simple as thank you for your service something as simple as well what can I do for you today is there anything you need and then you know these some of the clerks eyes open like you asking me what I need and I'm like yeah I'm talking to you you <laughs> so it's funny um, and then the providers the nurses everyone is especially grateful for these sessions and so in doing so I'm able to also to share the Word of God at the end of the day when nothing else worked I boldly state to you I'm not sure where what's your belief um, but do you believe uh, you're Christian do you believe in Jesus Christ um, do you believe in a second coming? And, um, of course, working for a government agency, you're not allowed to say that. But this is what I'm talking about, boldly confessing. And with all the tools and techniques they have given me, guess what? What really worked is that consolation knowing that. Let's step back into what you do Saturday or Sunday. Or what you grew up in, that belief. Let's step back into that reservoir of faith that you had. And if it's low let's refill it let's put more gas into it so that that can be reignited and it can, you can be reinvigorated um as a result and my my sisters it's it's mind-boggling because god is so powerful concluding with that always that peace be still that's exactly what occurs um 100% of the time. I can't even say 99.9. 100% of the time when I end with that, regardless what is family issues, they're going through. One person had some really bad news, you know, over the weekend when, when I spoke um, this week. And so at the end, do you believe? And then I had um, chocolate services got involved. 
more directly and that's what it's about so for me it's another opportunity to reach out to my clinical family let them know we love them and appreciate the work that they do god bless them but understand that um the bigger picture is this regardless whether you make it or not the question is where would your soul be um and therefore let's start working on that as well take this time so whether you're performing a procedure you can say one of the psalms um the lord is my shepherd the our father um, or your own prayer of thanksgiving and praise being that you're here you're gifted to do this work so there's a ministry in everyone and everything and it's important to target the doctors and the physicians and the nurses because it's important to know you know in the second coming and when we reside with him in jerusalem we'll be perfect beings there'll be no more sicknesses right and there'll be no one doing wrong so we don't need a legal team so all these prestigious positions that we hold in high esteem in our current environment that goes out the window and the question is your heart your soul your intent and understanding and believing who has the ultimate power right and serving that person day in and day out and not serving him unwillingly serving him willingly humbly serving him willingly That's what it comes down to. So I see this as a ministry. So as I go in every day, I get excited knowing I get to witness to somebody else. Why do my job? You can't get any better than that. And so um, I encourage you, stay steadfast in prayer, consume the word. Um, every second, every minute, every hour, consume the word without ceasing. Um, this is a Passover week. You know, many things, a lot can happen um, during this time. And so, you know, get ready. Put on your helmet of salvation, you know, and have that sword ready to testify and to teach and to learn as well. So I just wanted to send this message of hope and faith and obviously love to everyone and feel free to take this and send it to everyone else who may need to hear it um, because on the front line I am but more importantly is where my soul resides and where my peace resides is with them above and I understand what I'm doing though I'm going to the front line um, to help the first responders um, there's so many different ways of doing it and to me what is continuing to bring comfort is the word Sometimes they may forget and they would remember the word by letting them know. So that's what gives me much peace throughout the midst of the storm. So still well, my sisters. Shalom.